trying to beat the light right now get to our spots so much more interesting to see it in the daytime these old soviet mosaics it's beautiful i think it's soviet or it might be post i don't know and there she is wow you know what it's actually taller than i thought i think i see my root up okay let's do it keep my eyes peeled but also stay safe see where i'm putting my feet in my hands but if i don't do this i don't think i'd fully have come here <laughs> Yep, got one more to go. Some stalkers. Looks like Checkmate's gonna go speak with them. Wow, here I am. Okay, oh it freaking moves. Get to the top. Just be careful because obviously it does move. Chernobyl with reactor four right behind me. So, I want to get down from this ferris wheel now. Okay. Be very careful because the object moves. I asked Misha earlier and he said there's about 30 people in the zone right now. Yeah, it's interesting. I wasn't surprised we saw some at the ferris wheel. I like that. Wow that crossed off the bucket list. So back in the Soviet times, a lot of semi-large cities used to have these things recreationally for people, for like kids and families to go to. Let me just check this out really quick before we go. And if anyone knows if that was pre or post Soviet, please let me know because that's beautiful. If that is, I don't think it's a mosaic, I apologize, but that's definitely a beautiful artwork that was done. Why do the stalker route? Why not just do it the regular way, Pripyat? You know, you could pay for a tour to come to Pripyat. Okay, so the answer is really simple for me. There's a couple things. The first thing, I wanna feel like I've earned it. I think there's something so interesting about going the stalker route, to me, it's always it's always been appealing. Like an abandoned city is not something you should just be able to get on a bus and go to. Not saying I like or I dislike the paid tours, but what I am saying is that for me, I'd rather do it this way. And the third thing, which is the most important for me, is the freedom to do what I want to do specifically in the, jo the zone. Obviously, of course, still respecting the place. That freedom allows me to climb. Let's see the Ferris wheel. So yes, you can get a tour. You can go to the Ferris wheel. You can walk right up to it. I'm sure you can. I obviously am a climber. So I want to be able to climb specific things that I have a goal for. The Ferris wheel was one. This roof is another. But yeah, guys, so we're gonna keep going and get up to the top of that roof. Wow. Holy crap. Wow. Now, it would only be rude if I didn't climb this. I mean, come on. You're never really at the top until you're at the top. And look, a refreshing tree, a refreshing pine tree just to motivate you. Thank you, tree. You've been a good inclination of my boost of enthusiasm. Whoa. What a beautiful way to watch the sunrise. Good morning, Pripyat. So guys, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Culture Center. I'm gonna head there back now. For any of you Call of Duty fans, this is the hotel where you take the shot. Checkmate just told me. So the Culture Center, what does it say, bro? Okay, 
yeah, he reads Cyrillic. He's fluent in Russian, so. And then that's where they execute stalkers on that chair right there. <laughs> Okay guys, so now from here, we're gonna go to the Pripyat River. Um, Checkmate says he knows a spot that he was at last time when he was with Anton and Shai. Chill there, check it out. Looks pretty cool. Now this is definitely an old Soviet mosaic. They used to do these during the time of the Soviet Union. People used to piece by piece put these things together. Beautiful art, but it's just a shame to see it all rot away. But, such is life. Beautiful. Yeah. What'd you say, Rob? So, these life bowls are unique to Pripyat. You really? won't find them anywhere else in the former Soviet Union. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. You see the hammer and sickle of the old USSR. Yeah. The hammer represented the factory and the labor workers of the People's Party, right? The sickle represented the agricultural side of the USSR. And that's, I think that's where the, the thing came from. That's where we think. Yeah. Interesting. Pripyat Cafe, according to Checkmate. You okay? Alright. <laughs> so you think you had water machines. Like drink some water. Clean, Clean water. water. Yeah. Wow. So these are old dispenser yeah, like old water vending machines. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Does it say voda? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is this the river? Yeah. Completely trashed in there, but that would have been at one point such probably like a beautiful lookout over the river Pripyat here. This looks like a beautiful spot. That's a Those are the cranes. Awesome. I know it's hard to see, but if you guys can see the camera, those are the cranes over there, the harborside cranes. I think he's seen better days. This, these are some photos of like Pripyat before the disaster. That's the cafe. This cafe. There it is again. It's incredible how 35 years nature just reclaims the majority of this. It's kind of sad actually. From here, we're going to go to a school and finally to the pool. That's something I want to see is the pool. Huh? Back to school. Back to school. This is called middle school number three. These abandoned classrooms. Look at this, the wallpaper used to be paintings of children. Something 1912, it's in Cyrillic, I think. If anyone knows how to translate that, please do. Please tell me what this says. Handwriting's perfect, it looks like it's almost typed. That's incredible. Just left here, man. For decades. Just left here for decades. 
in a way, there's a part of me that says, I'd love to take these home and, and frame them and give them a home, give, you know, turn them into a museum or something, but I can't because one of the rules of doing it the stalker way is you do not take anything, you do not break anything. You leave the zone how it is, you respect the zone. I think the important thing to remember is that the zone is a place that is meant for understanding the significance of a disaster and to never have something like this happen again. I wish though that the government would take this stuff, like all of this stuff here that's just lying around, it, like these books, the writings, and preserve them. I don't know why, but seeing this makes me very sad. I was never a kid who enjoyed school. I still don't enjoy school. I think there's something so so sad about the fact that you're you're doing your your daily life, and then a disaster happens because people, a person, and a group of people, cheaply do something, underlook something. All these people's lives to change. I mean, just think significant, right? That seat right there probably wasn't moved much in the past 35 years. The student who sat there with this book out, he would have went home that night, left his stuff, just to think he was gonna come back to school the next day, but instead had to board a bus to evacuate and never return. I think it's important to look at it in a way like this as well, because these are more than just journals and books. This is very unique and preserve it on camera because who knows how much longer this is gonna be here. These are all children's gas masks. It's like a doll with a gas mask filter. Looks like the kitchen over there. I guess maybe this was the cafeteria at one point. All the sinks where they used to wash hands. The gymnasium. How broken that is, those floors. I think I can hear the guys upstairs, so I'll go up there and see what they're doing. So this next one is the pool, guys. So back in the Soviet times, they used to put these in communities like pools, basketball places, just like a recreational center. And that right there is the famous pool of Pripyat. Whoa. Are you going to no, I didn't. There used to be a flag up here, didn't there? This used to once be filled with people swimming. This 
last night. Right. Okay, let's be careful. It's mine, bro. Cool. I'll fill up your guys's. Last one. Water feels good. Good. You did some Call of Duty shit. Yo, that was cool, dude. Dude, I thought we were gonna be seen by those tourists. All right, guys, we got the water. We're gonna try to start walking to Duga relatively soon. So we need to first get back and not get seen. That's the first thing. Yeah, fucking hell, fucking sorry, bro. <laughs> no. I can't believe your shoe came off. Crap. I got that on camera. I heard more tourists over there. Sweet home. Okay. All right, guys, having our brekkie slash lunch. Hmm. So, before we drink that water, I want to boil mine. We don't obviously have a filter, so this is the best I can do. So let it boil and then put it back in, basically. You ready? Yeah. Okay guys, so we actually just did a unit count of our water and it looks like we are missing a bottle. So that means we're gonna have to share a little bit of water uh, with each other. Unfortunately, that means we can't safely go to Duga because Duga, although is towards back where our pickup point is, it is slightly out of our way. Exactly, it's a deviation. And the problem with that is in weather like this, you don't wanna run out of water because the only clean place we know to drink water here in Pripyat at that water place. What we have, I only have two bottles of water and I've just sipped out of the first one, so we'll I gotta share. make that last. Exactly, so we're gonna have to share. We're just gonna head back to the pickup point now. We're gonna probably come back in the future and do just a specific two day trip to do go to climb it. Anyway guys, we're all packed up. We're gonna leave our nice cozy apartment, check out, and we're gonna get on the move. We have to go back on that disgusting road. <laughs> oh man, that's like making me nervous thinking about it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Yo, it's been sick. Twenty dollars to look the power line. Did that electrocute you? No. Nah, it's off. <laughs> hope you got your tetanus shot then. <laughs> and now the long hike. Outskirts of the city now. You there, sir. I certainly hope you have a radiation license. Eh, not great, not terrible. Let's go this way. <clears throat> okay guys, right up at this intersection. We're gonna head that way. We're gonna keep pushing. 
until we get to that turn. When we get to that turn, then we can stop and have a quick break. Okay, let's check the radiation. 1.76. And on to the nice, tiring sand. Fucking sand. I hate it. Holy crap, it just shot to eight. <laughs> dumplings at Posada. Like just fill in the dumplings. Dude, I love the dumplings. Like oh. dump you kurva <laughs> nahu. Um Are you okay? The log was like in the ground. <laughs> I just feed it my shit. Dude, I literally have done that like ten times this trip oh, easy. Fuck. Yeah dude, dumplings at Pizzata with some sour cream and borscht. Smetana. Oh uh, ocean borscht. Nice food. Cappuccino. Okay guys, we did literally 25 kilometers today. I don't know how we did that. We just pushed through it. We are in the forest, basically the middle of nowhere. And you got Michelle there, got a checkmate there. <laughs> Sorry, just trying to light his face. <laughs> Sorry, dude. We're gonna push the last five miles tomorrow to the pickup point and then get up in the morning. Good morning. Thanks. Good morning, guys. All right, so, well, we get like six hours sleep. Nine. Oh, wow. Okay, so we got about nine hours sleep. Got to pass a village. Got to swim the river. Five miles to the pickup. And then, yeah, five miles to the pickup spot, guys. Two stalkers passed by earlier on their way to Pripyat, so their trip has only just begun, but heard some wolves last night as well, which was cool. But anyway, we're going to pack up and get a move on. Okay, three miles to the river. Two hundred to the river, excellent. Not far now, guys. Two hundred meters, we can go swimming. Uh, I never thought I'd be so happy to see this river. Hallelujah. That's where we entered a few days ago, guys. Yep. Oh, balat. Balat. Oh, that feels excellent, yo. All right, guys, let's grab my bag and then bring it to the other side. And then I am going to go back in because this is wonderful. Fighting a current. Yo, how's the water? Can I have a swimming race? No. I used to be a swimmer. I used to do it. When I was a kid, like I went to a swimming pool for two years. Amazing, bro. Thank you. Hey, uh, I'm out of water. You, you got any I could just take a sip of? Once you get dressed. Yeah, boy. Last stretch, guys. Officially out of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, guys. So now, just about a mile and a half to the pickup point, but last mile and a half, guys. I'm out of water. Let's keep pushing. <laughs> just outside the Chernobyl exclusion zone not even two kilometers really and you have a working village that just was outside of that 50 kilometer radius you still have people inside chernobyl who have never left actually but last half a mile guys that's 800 meters and that is it i'm not gonna walk for a year i think it's <laughs> gonna be the longest fucking mile ever yeah definitely Whew, almost there Здравствуйте. <laughs> where we started this is it guys right here okay. yeah boy these look good oh, oh 
my goodness. Oh. Shit. Yo, we just did Chernobyl on our own, bro. Oh. Guys, that's been an incredible trip. What a journey. We are done. The only thing we got to do now is just wait for our driver. What an incredible place. Thank you, man. Leave some for me. Uh, I'm so thirsty. Chernobyl, done after years and years of planning, and almost a decade and a half of wanting to do this. It's done, it's in the bag. Holy crap, guys. It was awesome. Will I do it again? Absolutely. At least not for six months, though. I need to recharge. We're gonna go get some food now and just chill on the next one. Okay, so Siroga is starting a new journal about stalkers and the zone and he asked us to write what does the zone mean to us. Each of us write something about the zone and like leave well, it. Mine's gonna be in English. It's no problem. Any languages will do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. opening a bottle. Not 12 hours ago, we were sitting all on our butts through the Chernobyl exclusion zone. And now, back in Kiev in the center, ending it off nicely in this nice little spot that I like, right in the center of Kiev, Maidan Square. Pretty lively. It's a nice place. Ukraine in the summer, I like it. Just being able to do Chernobyl, doing it successfully, putting that to rest. It's gonna be really good. It's gonna be really good. But for now, just enjoy the view. Oh, I forgot. Oh, the dragon, dude. <laughs> the girl? 